This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Greetings, Remnant Nation. I praise God that we are here on this Sabbath together. And greetings to all of you around the world. If you are visiting, it is important to know that this truth and concept of light is fundamental to the beginning walk of the remnant, those that seek immortality. The subject of introspection versus projection, correction and redirection were the basic doctrine or tenets of the original materials that God had me dictate. And not unlike what God gave the Apostle John, who so eloquently just told us, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light. The darkness is clear. It is the lies that cover and condone men's evil. What is the light? It's an incredible ray of truth that is beaming down from the source of all truth. And it lights up every characteristic in your soul, every motive of your actions, every thought in your mind. This light is a bright, clear revelation, more powerful than the imaging machines that expose the first stages of cancer. It illuminates the real contents, the actual contents of your heart. When Remnant began, there were only 80 members, but it was instantly world renowned, partially because Way Down was international, but also because God purposed that this place would be in the news and be known. It was in Christianity Today, Wall Street Journal, and it had been on many other shows. But as this little church was just sitting in a circle of 80 people, over comes BBC and Italian TV and Australian TV and many more. Some of them we didn't document. We were visited every year, several times a year by the media and all they could see is a small group worshiping God. Yet it was insisted on by every media person in every document in every Christian community that we were different. When you visited and when you visit today, you notice yourself that this place is different from other churches. Even though Satan will try to twist this and say that we're either on one end of the spectrum bizarre or the other end of the spectrum, we're not different at all. But you know and I know, Satan knows and the world knows, we are different. God continues to keep that separation. Yet, God is the one that has set us apart. If you look at it in a positive light, and we are in agreement on this point, this place is different. What is the difference? Craving this light is one of the main fundamental differences of a true Christian. 
The remnant was and continues to be built around this ray of light. Why do men love the darkness? Because this x-ray machine shows the unacceptable, shameful parts of mankind. Satan has the world bound up in a foolish pride that constantly reinforces the lie that you're wonderful in your sin, loved no matter what you do, saved no matter what you do, and that there's nothing that you can do. Those that try to step from the darkness into the light for the first time are actually in shock when they finally see themselves as they really are. They are the one that is lacking. They are the one that's needy. My goodness, take a look. It's shocking. They are the one that's depraved and they did not know that they were the cause of their problems. Marriage problems, their obesities, their children's rebellion, anger, etc. Warts and flaws are standing out now that were at once you thought hidden. How appalling to see that your own unclean mind and heart materialism, filthy language, the lustful thoughts, the greed of the heart, the pride of life, the ugly. And you thought it was beautiful. The unrepentant gravitate quickly to the dark places, the dark churches that do not turn on the light for the fear of offending any members stepping on any toes because the pain of the light of the guilt is overwhelming if you're not used to it. You say that this is found in all the churches? Think again. Indeed, if a denomination chooses true Christianity versus partial Christianity. That I will agree that there's partial Christianity there, but when it chooses the full light and true Christianity, it chooses immediate, all out, cosmic, spiritual, mind boggling war. Number one, you feel the pain inside the heart, conviction, guilt, for the first time, ownness, personal responsibility, the weight, and the first feelings of self-reproach. Unbelievable feelings that are real. Number two, if a church so decides to continue to stay in the light, its members and all of its members would experience an onslaught from the world, persecution from family and friends and fellow employees, which each family entering the ranks experiences. So it's an essential test from God that's immediate. Do you love your Isaac? Can you put your knife up to your Isaac? Do you love me or do you love your family? It's so scary because you have to go all the way with giving up your family before he gives it back. Your own heart determines the length of that test. Number two. Now number three. If the true church continues to be in the light, and it's the real deal, when you're in the light, the dragon can see you. The dragon is awakened from the pit of hell. 
and the gate of Hades opens wide. It's unleashing demons. And they come in so many forms of bizarre testing and voices, a mental battle as well as physical testing like you've never experienced testing before. Your nerves, your patience, your love, and everything in you is tested to see what is in your heart. How comfortable the life prior to the light was. Everyone played along with the game that you're wonderful, they're wonderful, I'm okay, you're okay, thank you Jesus for all you've done. You go out another week and it's another week of I'm okay and you're okay and we're okay and we're saved, thank you Jesus. Another week goes by and there's no warfare. Why would Satan bother? uses energy there. You're in the dark. You step into the light and you feel this real incredible, could feel like almost a heart attack, pain of guilt, persecution from the majority and the mental demonic warfare, all of it together. The craziness and the pain is so great that it is a do or die, a swim or sink, an all or nothing experience. And if you don't throw your all into the fight and make a choice for the all, with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength, you do not get the Holy Spirit and you do not survive before long these half-hearted that don't throw their all in it to it return back to re the religion of the half-hearted. They turn back to the darkness, the comfortable darkness. Now with twice the demons in their heart, bent on proving there is no such thing as a cleansing light or a human that can overcome the world. That's not what Jesus meant when he said that. No matter what Jesus said, there's no human that can do that. You go back in believing the lie, the comfortable lie the dark gathers the multitudes. The ray of life is a narrow beam. The light hurts. It hurts the eyes of the dark ones. The dark ones live only to drag the transformed back into the dark. How does this light disseminate. The light comes through words to the conscience of those that take the time to meditate. Without that time, few words will be ever absorbed. They're divine words from revelations from the heavens words of the messengers sent by God, words from the mouth of babes or dreams, powerful words that are sharper than any two-edged sword that's so strong it can divide the closest of families. The light, it's an exposing x-ray that can uncover the truth and reveal the innermost intentions of the soul which come from Christ. And the words come 
from the heavens. They're poured out through faithful men and women who've had to give up an ordinary life in order to live, to convict the world of sin through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, conviction, correction, confession are indispensable and dear to a remnant member. And it's what the true saint instinctively embraces, for it is the vital bath of the soul that leaves behind the profound peace and love, the new creation that flies above the world in a spiritual city called Zion. It is very misunderstood and therefore rejected by those of the world, worldly people. The light is essential for true Christians, those with the rare dedication to stay focused in a private mirror that exposes every error, every fault, every blemish, every shortcoming. This light is just the plain truth about each of us, whether you like it or not. This light is the most misunderstood concept because Satan has diluted its power by offering a false religion of lies that give a false covering for your behavior and a lie about God's response to one's rebellion. But true saints find this truth as the way to heaven's required change. They find it as the way to securing their salvation. False churches, and the medical and the psychological institutions all shake hands together as they deem all immoral behavior as a disease and out of the control of the human and only cured by a pill. But this pill simply numbs so that you do not care anymore about your original high and lofty calling of getting everything right and ready for that great day. That great day that is not far away. Time is running out. If someone is a mocker, the Bible teaches that they will reject the words of the light, the correction, or the redirection, and then insult and slander the angel of light that delivered the kiss. Proverbs says in chapter 15, verse 12, a mocker resents correction. He will not consult the wise. Mockers do not consult the wise, and they even applaud their own offspring in the antichrist and anti-authority spirit. It's humorous to them. Humility, surrender, submission, respect is not on the lips of the arrogant, idle lovers. To avoid the light or the correction, the mocker will hide back and avoid turning into the, to the convicting sermons. This pride is confident that it is right. And if someone can prove them wrong, the impenetrable heart quickly makes it the fault of others. The stubborn think 
that if shepherds want them to make those superfluous changes, then they'll just have to track them down. These spirits are not born again in the kingdom of God. A self-assured spirit that never looks into a mirror or weighs themselves on an accurate scale. Flattery and pride covers it all up as this person compliments themselves too much to perceive their own depravity. As Psalms 36, 1 says, an oracle is within my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for in his own eyes he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his sin. Flattery keeps you from detecting. Flattery keeps you. Your own flattery keeps you from hating sin, which is essential for you to turn. Satan tells you that you're okay and that confessing to an, a, a leader or a shepherd, an elder, is demeaning, like being drug into a principal's office. How upside down. Someone taking the time to be the physician of your needs. Even young children at an early age know how to avoid successful correction. They blink their eyes, they play dumb, they turn on the drama, they cry or exclaim that they never do anything right. God's encouragers and counselors become exhausted because they're forced into proving that God has been wronged, that sin is present. This is all manipulations. Manipulations, those are all manipulations because they love the dark and they're keeping godly shepherds in the dark, they think. Those that love their own indulgence hate the light that could take their extra food, their money, that they love their own time that's theirs, their energy that they've saved up for something they want to do could take even a hobby away. They want the lust of this world. And they have no time or heart for the kingdom of God, someone else's agenda. Idolatry is simply self-indulgence. That's all it is. It's you controlling. A controller is godless because they want to control the exact moment in time that they indulge themselves. So they have a dumb mute idol, or they are themselves the idol. They're the ruler. They want another ruler. They don't want God's rule. They're idolatrous. They don't trust God's control to indulge them enough. Satan says, look at the poor. You might be poor if you follow God's way. Look at those poor thin eaters. 
They don't get to eat enough. The women in submission, they're oppressed. The falsely accused to the center of these situations are thought oppressive. But to the saint and who lives and waits for God to give them the right time and the indulgence he wants to give them, they're elated. They're happy. They're carefree, like a child, so free of guilt. They don't know what's next, but next is always great. Whatever God gives is so much more fun than what they would have given themselves. To the mocker of God, conviction never comes as they clearly and skillfully give multiple excuses and stay on the defensive, followed by resentment and ultimately a reasonable projection, an intellectual projection that they're not wrong and that surely they've been misunderstood. And they'll even verbally acquiesce just to end this uncomfortable spiritual confrontation. Not allowing its true work that spiritual ultrasound, that spiritual CAT scan or imaging scans, they don't want to go all the way, knowing full well that they have no intentions of giving control over to God. They hate the diagnosis that there's anything wrong, that they've got to change. They hate it. They love their own way. The spiritual cancer, and they dread the spiritual chemotherapy. The truth can hurt, yes, but oh, the pain of the dreadful spiritual cancers that overtakes the good and leaves a vessel of evil inside that's good for nothing but to be thrown out and burned. Oh, for an early diagnosis before it's too late. That's what's ideal. Early in life, ongoing preventive medicine testing, spiritual testing. It's hard to get into the heart of the stubborn. They won't let you there. They're skilled, but they're the ones that weigh the blessings and the curses. That I know about them. They're smart. They're smarter than they carry on. They know all too well that they love their idol of indulgence or control, whatever it may be. And they have chosen to endure the curses as long as they can have their hearts love, lust, whether it be food, or other loves above God. They long for a, a class, a sermon, a word that would just make them turn from sin and not want it anymore, not realizing that they need to make the choice themselves No one can make them love God over themselves. They need to choose self-denial. Hate the sin. Love what God has asked us to do. Waiting on God to give. Where the saint has found self-denial as sweet, 
the sinner has believed the lie that the self-indulgence is sweet and how unfortunate for all that it takes before the stubborn decide to give up their indulgence. Leviticus 26, scan it behind me. It's a chapter that starts with a level of curses that escalates with stubbornness. It's the scariest chapter in the Bible. Leviticus 26 shows the stubbornness so deep that there are incremental devastating things happening in every paragraph. And then to hear the comment that in spite of all this, if you still do not listen to me, but continue to be hostile, then in my anger I will be hostile toward you, and I myself will punish you for your sins seven times over. You will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters, and I will destroy your high places, cut down your incense altars, and pile your dead bodies on the lifeless forms of your idols, and I will abhor you. altogether dreadful if you continue in sin. Proverbs 5, 12, you will say, how I have hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. Jeremiah 2, verse 30, in vain I punished your people. They did not respond to correction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a ravening lion. And then, Jeremiah 5, 3, O oh Lord, do not look for truth. Do not your eyes look for truth. You struck them, but they felt no pain. You crushed them, but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than stone and refused to repent. If someone ignores or plays around or defends correction, he is not walking in the light. He's in the darkness. Proverbs 15, verse 5. A fool spurns his father's discipline, but whoever heeds corrections shows prudence. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Proverbs 13, 18. He who ignores discipline comes to poverty and shame. But whoever heeds correction is honored. Poverty and shame versus honor. Poverty and shame and stupidity. It's connected with rejecting correction. Beautiful correction. The Proverbs are full. 15.10, stern discipline awaits him who leaves the path. He who hates correction will die. I've seen this more times than I would like. People leaving the path. It's so painful to watch. The death that Christ asks us gives life. The death of those that refuse to die to their own wills is devastating. Destructive, eternally destructive. Proverbs 15, 32, he who ignores discipline despises himself, but whoever heeds correction gains understanding. There you go. So you do harm to yourself if you're not going after and running after this light, this correction. In Proverbs 29, 15, the rod of correction imparts wisdom, but a child left to himself will die. Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. Fools run from it. Fools hide. Fools ignore it. Fools hate getting in under correction and don't expect it. God disciplines those whom he loves. This discipline, this correction is for those that he loves. 
in Proverbs 3, 12 backs it up because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Where do you get people that will even bother to correct you? God disciplines his sons. And it may not seem pleasant at the time, but in the end, you know, it brings forth a harvest of righteousness. We have seen the good of it. 1 Corinthians 11:32. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. And there's the whole point. Pride, family protection, spousal protection. You don't want anybody to know that about your wife. Self-protection mixed with lies, trying to deflect all this. Those who are afraid to give up their hidden lust hide out. And they keep saying to themselves, I don't want to bother leadership with our marriage problems, my lust problems. We're going to get this right and then we'll go talk to them. They're listening to the voice of Satan and clinging to their pride. And I've watched that take people right out of here. Correction equals truth, this light. And stubbornness and mocking correction hiding from it is darkness, condemnation, and death. Jeremiah 7, 28. Therefore say to them, this is the nation that has not obeyed the Lord, its God, or responded to correction. Truth has perished. It has vanished from their lips. I've sat and watched this happen over the last two decades to this overall nation. The enemy of Christianity is pride. Pride skillfully squashes and blocks reason, accuracy, and reality. Pride will judge everyone else, yet it can't even glance into the mirror to see its own heart. This causes truth to perish and disappear for the next generation. Pride is evil. Without seeing the flaws of your soul, there's no hope for the essential change needed for salvation. One has sealed their fate. One has sealed their eternal doom. For many, they have to see their job threatened, Leviticus 26, their marriage threatened, their children threatened, their church status threatened, everything good gone, bankrupt in every area, emotionally, financially, relationally, before they will really even take correction as a possibility that God could be telling them that they are on the wrong path and that their salvation is in serious jeopardy. Oh, the dreadful fate of those that would not take correction in loving doses as they grew up, given by their Creator for the salvation of their souls. For some, they're sealed over. It's too late. They can't hear nor see what is being said. So the world agrees that the remnant is different. What is this difference? Each true member, which is the majority, has purposely left different religions or denominations of no conviction. And they have come here to a place that offers a continual stream 
welcomes the light, welcomes the words of conviction, welcomes the paragraphs and the page after page after page of the light. This shower of truth feels good to the remnant. It cleans the heart. It justifies, it sanctifies, it purifies. Like radiation treatment, this light kills off the evil cells, leaving only the good cells behind, the healthy cells, the happy cells, the functioning cells. It increases the energy. It increases everything. You can see better physically and spiritually. You can run, you can leap like calves out of a stall. It's real. It works. <laughs> Feel the power of the happiness of the ray of light. With that applause, how powerful is that instantaneous little pause and amen from the saints. Jesus Christ is the light that came into this world. But the worldly religious no longer offers the true Jesus Christ. So they remain in the dark. For the true Jesus Christ, the light is so powerful that you hear the words from Jesus as he states to cut off your hand if it causes you to sin, leaving no room for the idol of indulgence. No room for self-indulgence. The dark insist on a religion that justifies their non-repentant life. They love the doctrine that gives them the license to murder or commit adultery, idolatry, greed, slander, etc. All of which clearly will not enter the pearly gates of heaven. How do you know a fellow saint? A true called out Christian will love correction and redirection. How different are the true mature saints? You know when you're in their presence for they long to be in the presence of spiritual doctors who are able to diagnose correctly. They love the presence of those who are in authority and have truth and have a genuine heartfelt repentance. Without the drama, you know because they don't try to cover it up or talk too fast or give you excuses. And you know that if they come back to counsel again, there will be fruit from the last advice and they'll be ready to tackle something else. They put it into practice. True repentance. Or they may be so strong by now that they need advice on how to take this self-denial to the next level. They expect to be corrected by God's Spirit 
at all times. You either love the darkness or the light, and there's no in between. You either hide out or you're in the light. Light is truth. Correction is love. True Christians crave the correction of the Holy Spirit all day, all night, and any day. They're ready and wanting to give up a lust or something that is outside the boundaries of their precious and giving and generous Heavenly Father who gives and gives and gives. Revelations 3:19. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. We must accept, then crave this correction and redirection. Be far from those who resent or despise correction, who manipulate. Correction is redirection. It's beautiful. It should be absolutely priceless to even get one correction and redirection. Why is it that the remnant gets here early to a service? And why do they leave late? They fight for a good seat. Why? To be able to hear and see so that the light will come clearly down on them and that the words of conviction can be heard so that it can soak in, so they can take it back and apply it. That's why. That's why the seats are filled early here and it's hard to get one. In a true saint, it's not unlikely to be able to hear the words, what do you see in me? They often check in with home base, with a wife, a husband, a leader. It's a sign of those that love the light, have chosen to follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ unto salvation. This is the verdict for this world. There are saints that long to be out of this dark world and who genuinely seek the light from above. Light has come into the world, but men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth, by this light, comes into this light. And this light proves the existence of a loving, caring God who offers, in truth, eternal salvation. May God grant mercy of repentance to those who walk in the darkness and have rejected this light. It becomes clear who loves the darkness and those that love this incredible ray of truth beaming down 
from the source of all truth that lights up every characteristic in your soul, every motive of your actions, every thought in your mind. This light is Jesus Christ and this truth may come from the words or authorities and it exposes and illuminates everything. We know it's essential so that you can stay on the narrow path. The remnant of God are different for they migrate and they live and crave this ray of light and the result is clean lives. Yes, different. No matter how in the minority, this different is good. And praise God for the light. It is Jesus Christ. And He came on earth so that we have a model to strive for, a light. And yes, there are those that will reject it and reject His righteous life. However, be encouraged. There are many that have come. There are more to come that will join us as it takes everything when you step into the light with this all-out demonic warfare conviction and all the crazy things that go on, but they are ready to fight with all their heart, with all their strength, with all their soul to achieve the good standard given to mankind. They will fight harder and they will finally run and then they will fly like eagles and overcome this world, their desires. And they will live in the end with all that effort for God alone. Those that are in the dark need to make the choice because this place is about the light and the light's not gonna stop shining here with willpower and resolve like never before. May God bless those saints that live in the light because this light is so powerful, it's so pure that it will one day light up the world. We sing hallelujah.